How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on here to help you guys with streaming. If you're enjoying that content, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell icon as well. So in today's video for Streamlabs OBS, I'm going to be showing you how you can use browser source. Now browser source used to be this huge thing that we all had to use when we were using Studio. So OBS Studio required for us to use a lot of browser source. So there are still times where we will still use it even inside of Streamlabs OBS, even though most of the time, a lot of the things that we used to use all that stuff for is already over here in what they call widgets. So for right now, a browser source, which I already have three of them set up for example, but I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and create your own. So the first thing is make sure you have a scene created by clicking on the plus to create that scene. And then you're gonna go over to the plus over here by sources and you're gonna see browser source. So it says that it can be used for web pages, third party widgets, as well as HTML. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on that. And you can see that I have three different ones already existing. And I'm gonna show you these examples in just a moment. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is just click on add new source and you're gonna be presented with this type of window. Now this window will disappear once you put in a certain link. Now there's two different things you can do. You can either put in a URL, which I have two of those as examples, or you can do a local file which allows you to browse your own computer for whatever it is that you want to display. Now you can also change the width and height. I leave these as the same and I don't really ever touch the FPS. Now if you know that the video is 60 or if you want to have it be a certain width or if it looks like it's too scrunched or unproportioned then you can go ahead and mess with the width and height. The custom CSS you don't have to mess with any of that stuff. Now for the shutdown source when not visible, you can leave that. I mean, that's defaulted. I've never really seen any issues with keeping that, but I will show you what it's like when both of these are disabled. Now there's really no big difference between shutdown source when not visible and refresh browser when the scene becomes active. Like I tried it with the bungee one that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. And it still starts it from the very beginning and it refreshes the actual browser source. Whether you have it as shutdown source when not visible or having the refresh browser when the scene becomes um, active. Now, if you're wanting to refresh any of the current page that you are working with or if you're wanting to not have to wait for it to time out itself and you just want to kind of quickly refresh it and see where it is you can go ahead and click on the refresh cache of the current page so i'll be showing you guys this later on with like uh chatbot or not chatbot but like the, the 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 chat widget and that way you'll be able to see it refresh and everything like that so we'll go ahead and we will just Leave this stuff as is because I'm already creating, I already created some for you. So I'll go ahead and open those up real quick. So I'm going to delete this one off. So we'll go ahead and click the minus to remove, or you can just hit delete on the keyboard. So the first one I'm going to show you is the bungee source. So I have them all hidden. So this one is going to be your bungee source. So as you can see, it's pulling the video directly from YouTube itself. So what I did in the properties is I just grabbed the YouTube link, I threw it in there, and it populated the video and everything like that. Everything is still the same, I didn't change anything. So if I was to uncheck this, you're gonna see that it refreshes there. And if I click refresh cache, it's gonna refresh it again, as you can see up there. If I do the refresh browser when scene becomes active, I'll click done. And what I'll do here is I'll go to new scene. I'll go back and you see how it refreshes. Now, if I was to go back into properties, uncheck both, we'll let it play for a little bit. And then I'll go on to new scene. I'll come back, it's still playing. I'll come back, it's still playing. So you can see that, that when they're unchecked, it just keeps going from where it is. Now, one of the other benefits of having this checked 
is so it doesn't play anything while you're on another scene. So when you have it not visible, so when it's not up on the screen, then if you're on a different scene, that won't be playing in the background. So that is a benefit for that. So I'll go ahead and we'll hide that one. So event list. This is going to be coming from Streamlabs OBS itself. This is a widget that you can grab a link right off of uh, Streamlabs' website and you'll be able to just add it in here. Now, event lists are just showing when people follow, host, sub, bit, whatever the case may be, and it will just kind of sit there and stack on each other if you have more than one. So you can set it to where it only displays one, or you can set it to where it displays multiples of however many you want. And then for the local file, the local file is a video that's directly off my computer. And this is uh, one of the parts that I was doing a recording for me going over to Halo Outpost. So this kind of shows you, you can also pull them from a local computer as well. So browser sources are pretty, pretty unique, pretty self-explanatory, nothing too crazy for them and very useful. But like I said, most of the stuff you guys are going to be using is going to be in the widgets over here and they still kind of follow the same uh, things where you can adjust any of the settings like the um, like the width and height. I couldn't think of the words. But for the most part, you really won't use browser source for many things unless it's a third party type thing that Streamlabs OBS doesn't use. Like maybe if you're using pixel chat or if you're using something for mix it up, if you're streaming over on Mixer, you know, you, you want to have the overlays and stuff to populate through that bot, then you'll have to have a browser source for that. Or if you're wanting to use, um, well, this will probably have its own, but sometimes if you're wanting to use Boom, which allows you to record clips and stuff, then that's also going to need its own browser source as well because it's a third-party app. So there are some times that you will need to use the browser source, but for the most part, you guys won't use it as much. But if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, new to the series, be sure to go ahead and take a look around. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe. But um, I appreciate you guys watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.